The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi folks, I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes for a few more to join. I think a few more are just joining in now, so just a couple of minutes and then we'll kick off. Okay, right, I think we've got everybody in now. Um, yep, yeah, I think we've got everyone in. Right, okay, I'm going to kick off. Um, good afternoon, um, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this webinar. Um, really kind of the topic came about um, over the last couple of months when just noticed a few websites that had been launched uh, by various different companies um, and having, a, having had a look at them, um, they just lacked um, the basics of search engine optimization um, and really it was, it was a case of putting time, resource and budget into developing these websites when really um, the fundamentals of making sure that people can easily find your website in search engines was um, pretty more or less ignored. So really this webinar just focuses on seven things that you can do um, on your own sites, on your competitor sites as well, just to see if the basics of SEO uh, are visible. Um, and even on your own sites, if there's things that are missing, um, it gets uh, a few things um, prioritized wise for you to implement in 2013. So kicking off, um, a little bit about me, uh, the digital marketing manager for Poorly Creative. Um, I've spent seven years working uh, for product manufacturers in the automotive industry and in construction industry and around two and a half years agency side and I'm responsible for doing the audits on um, existing client sites, um, planning for strategy um, around business objectives and then measuring that performance and reporting it back um, to, to clients. What is SEO? Um, SEO for me is a process. Um, it's you know, becoming more and more broad over the past few years um, as digital marketing has grown. And for me, it's more of a process, a profess, process for um, increasing the visibility of your website or a particular web page. Um, and we're now you know, starting to talk a bit more about content marketing as well, um, predominantly in search engines and, and organic listings in particular. There's two types of um, SEOs, there's on the page SEO, so things that you do on your site or on the page, um, and there's things that you do off the page, um, away from your website, so things like link building, which predominantly most people will um, assume SEO is all about, there's social aspects, there's trust, um, and then obviously little things like um, locality and which countries you're searching from. On the page, predominantly, is to do with the content, the quality, the words, engagement, the freshness and the uniqueness of that content. Um, the architecture is important as well of your website. So really there's lots of things to, to kind of bear in mind, lots of things that influence each other. This particular webinar we're focusing on on the page. So really giving you seven things that you can do on your own websites. A um, few briefs that we've had re recently. Um, and just focusing on SEO in particular, a lot of the briefs that we've received for new websites or um, existing websites is you know, SEO is there, we're doing it, but we don't really know why we're doing it or what the objectives are, we don't know whether it's working. Um, SEO really requires um, some objectives. Uh, an example of that ob objective and the most common objective is to generate better quality traffic to your site from non-branded search terms and non-branded search terms are search terms which people use in search engines that don't include your company name or your product brand names. Uh, a common question I like to ask marketers is what would you search for um, to find your company in a search engine without using your company name? 
And by just thinking about what someone else would search for if they didn't, weren't aware of you is what you should be optimizing your site for. So it's increasing traffic from non-branded search terms. There are some sites that are already established in search engines. They're already ranking well. They're already bringing in traffic. Well, the, another objective might be to diversify the range of keywords uh, and to start targeting topics or markets, um, and especially if you're targeting new markets. Um, themes and so it could be anything to do with um, Green Deal, Code for Sustainable Homes, British Standards. So you want to start linking your products or your company into a specialism in a particular type of um, legislation, a standard or, or a particular topic. And this is where blog and content can really come into to hand. Search phrases differ. Um, they're not short. They're not all short. Um, they're not all broad. They can be very, very specific. Um, so a range of search terms that you can see there, um, lots of hows, whats, whens, whys, um, good content that you can provide on your website. Um, if somebody is searching for um, when are warm roofs used, um, you, know, you want them to come onto your website to find the answers and then to speak to you as opposed to going onto your competitor's website to find the answers and speaking to them. So engaging people on in their research stage of the process very early on is important and visibility of your web website will help um, do that. An anatomy of a Google listing, so you've got three elements of a Google listing. The blue text that you see um, is, is what's called the page title. That bit of text is taken from your uh, page on your, on your website, and I'll, I'll explain where that is on the website in a second. The second part is the URL, and the black text you see is what's called the description. And the description is really almost, I, I treat it as a, as a subheading, it's a, it's a way of providing a bit of a description as to what you're about to, what kind of information you're about to get on this particular web page. Some helpful tips, page titles, try and keep them 60 to 70 characters, um, including spaces. That is what's displayed uh, when you search. So I've seen some websites that have listed on their page title, you know, literally every product or every service. However, Google kind of chops off after 70 characters. Now, it does fluctuate. URLs, make sure they're consistent and they contain keywords. And the description tag, as I've said, um, descriptive copy outlining the contents of the page. So they're the three elements that really make up a Google listing. And they're elements that are taken off your website. So what are the seven things you can do to check if your website has the basics of SEO? So if you've launched a new site, these are things that you can do and check if you've got an existing site, do these seven things. You may come up with a few things that might come up on an error and it will help you increase your visibility. The first one, and it ties back to the page titles of uh, the blue text of that Google listing, um, is located in your browser bar. So if when you open up your web page, right at the top in the left hand corner, depending on which browser you're using, this particular example is showing it on Google Chrome, um, will show you a pay, uh, the page title. And page titles really want to be descript descriptive and contain keywords. So this particular website is a website that belongs to a manufacturer of timber products for roofing and scaffolding sectors. And this is the kind of search terms that you want people to find your website for. So if somebody's looking for um, a timber manufacturer in the roofing sector, I'm more likely to show this website um, to that particular user. And there's a listing uh, within Google. Uh, which shows you where the page title is on the page and then how it's taken and populated to make the Google listing. However, some websites, um, you will see that the page title, the home page, is called either home page or home. Um, not a good thing. So a clear sign is if your home page says home or home page or just your company name, um, you're not really putting your um, optimization far enough to kind of target the people who are searching for people, uh, company that are not aware of your company name. Um, the description tag, the black text, um, try and play with those description tags. So depending on who you're trying to target, um, it could be uh, 
specifiers, architects who may want something a bit more aesthetic focused, design focused, whereas if you're targeting a specific product to an engineer, those description tags might be more technical orientated, so it contains um, some technical references, performance references. So there are various things that you can kind of test and, and, and analyze. The second one is URLs. So URLs need to be clean and show structure. And an example here is um, a product page. So you can see how it says johnbrush.co.uk forward slash and then the category product category which is anti-slip timber decking. Anti-slip timber decking or anti-slip decking is what we're trying to optimize a site for. And, and then forward slash uh, clean URL of the product um, brand name. Um, an example of how probably uh, a URL is not well best suited for SEO is something like this, an example from the Alpha BT website where you've got no indication of what that page is actually about. Um, it could be a case study page, it could be a successful project, it could be investor information. Um, you're not really giving any idea to Google or any other search engine what this page is about. It will need to work harder to look at various other elements of the page. So a helpful tip is to avoid numbers, avoid using symbols and uh, random words that you know, just don't mean anything to the user or search engines. If you do have a website with URLs that look like that, um, you can rewrite them, but it's a bit of a, a technical process um, and a bit of a development process as well. The third thing to check is redirects. Now, this is very, very common um, on, on lots of websites. Uh, basically, you've got your URL, which is www.mysite.co.uk, and it will load up your website. However, if you delete the www dots and hit enter, um, if the website loads up, you've got a bit of an issue because Google sees it as two home pages on two different web addresses that contain the same content. Um, so what ideally needs to be in place is a redirect. If you deleted www dot off your website, it should redirect back to www dot version of the website. Um, I just saw that tweet yesterday and I thought, perfect for this particular example. There's still a lot of websites that, that don't load if you take away the www dot version. So it's basic SEOs that, uh, SEO technique that needs to be put into place. The fourth thing you can check is sitemap. Um, sitemaps tell search engines how your website is structured. Um, a sitemap is created during a design stage. As soon as you hit the launch button is to tell search engines, here's my site, here are all the pages, um, and then it makes it easier for search engines to crawl your site when they come back and find updates or new content. By creating the sitemap, um, you're telling search engines what pages are new and it increases the chances of um, speeding up the process of getting new content indexed um, into search engines. Check five is robots text. Uh, robots text tells search engines which pages not to index or not to crawl. Particularly useful if you've got content which is private on your website or hidden behind a registration wall or also confirmation pages, thank you pages. So really you, you don't want these pages indexed in search engines and people to come to your website via these pages. Um, these are also known as goal pages um, if, you, if you're particularly um, looking to track traffic back to individual goals, which we'll look at shortly. So a helpful tip is to exclude all the pages that you don't want people to visit through your website. Check six is internal links. So on your key pages on your website, on your blog or your product pages, uh, your service pages, you want to create links to other pages in the site um, that are related to that particular page. So an example here is a, an article on a particular roofing button standard and the red text is highlighted which takes you to the product um, which conforms to that particular standard. A, it's 
useful for search engines because they can then match up the two pages together and, and realize that they're connected but also for users so if I read this article don't make me work hard to find the product that conforms to this standard I'm try and make it easier so linking relevant content what you also want to do is make sure that the text that you use to link other pages is descriptive um, and it doesn't exactly match what you're trying to um, optimize for, but it's variations of it's, it's, it. It's, it's a plus point of having good copywriters who understand how um, SEO works as well. Um, the final check is very easy. It's images. Um, search engines can't see images. They can only see text and code. Um, it's becoming more and more clever, but really the fundamental is to tell search engines what that image is showing. Um, when you upload an image through your content management systems, um, you'll notice that you're able to populate what's called the alt tag, uh, alternate text. Um, and it's to put in there a descriptive um, reference to what that image is so an example here is the image um, and, and how you can check that is to just scroll your mouse over um, an image on your your website and it should pop up with a little box that displays what the alt text is so in this example um, the alt text says anti slip plus timber decking so this particular picture to Google says it's to do with timber decking it's the product that we're showing um, on that product page So a helpful tip is to ensure images are descriptive and contain keywords also so that match what you're trying to optimize the site for. So just quickly run through the seven key points again. Make sure that the page titles and the descriptions are unique to every single page um, and they're descriptive. The URLs, make sure they're clean and well structured. Make sure the redirects in place. Go to your competitor's website delete the W's, hit enter, go to your own website, delete the W's, hit enter, it should redirect. If you get an error page or a 404 page or page not found, you've got something to fix there. Same with the sitemap, um, and I'll show you how to find the sitemap and robots text shortly, um, but make sure that they're present. Any body copy, link to various pages, make it easy for search engines, spiders, and for users to get to other bits of content. Images, make sure they're just descriptive and alt tags and that contain the keywords. Out of those, which one's the most popular? I'd probably say the first one, um, depending on how competitive it is for the depending on the keywords that you're trying to optimize for. Page titles can make massive difference. But if there's competitive search term that you're after, there's lots of other factors that will need to be um, right up there as well. So I'm going to show you an example and do those seven things on the site. Um, so loaded up here a particular product page for John Brush. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is check the page title. And I can see there it's descriptive. It's anti-slip plus timber decking for commercial applications. Um, and you can do this based on you know, what, where your product, are you targeting your product to the commercial sector or your residential sector? You want to try and position your products to the right people and, and bring in the right traffic. So we're talking about quality traffic here. URLs, again, nice and clean. Um, you can see the categories. Uh, redirect, so if I now take off the W, www dot, it should redirect me back to the W version. There you go. Hopefully, you did see that. Um, it's very quick, but what you don't want is the page to load up without the W's because there's two different pages. Sitemap, how do we go about checking for sitemap? All you do is you load up your website um, and you just put forward slash sitemap. And now, because this website is built using WordPress, it uses a slightly different um, sitemap URL. Depending on which platform your website has been built in, you'd either want to type in sitemap underscore index.xml um, if it's WordPress or sitemap.xml forward slash sitemap.xml and then hit enter. And it should load up an XML sitemap page. 
and this is purely as a structure of your website. If it loads up a 404 page or an error page, there's no sitemap. You're making it difficult for search engines to find your pages, crawl your pages, understand when it was last updated, um, and, and freak, increasing the frequency of, of a crawl. Robots text file, so we're going to check if this website has got a robots text file. We're telling search engines which pages not to include. All you do is type in robots.txt and hit enter. And again, it loads up a simple page like this. Again, if it, if it, um, if it was, shows up as an error, if it shows up as a 404 page, um, you haven't got a robots text file. You're making it difficult to search engines as to which pages to include and not include. Go back to the product page. So we've got body copy here, and we can now see that there's internal links that go to other pages. Um, keeping them to two or three is probably one too many in there, um, but making sure that there's a couple of um, links that go to various different pages. Images, again, all you do is put your mouse over the image and you can see the little pop-up box that comes up um, and it says Andy Slick plus Timber Decking. So there are the seven checks. So simply just by going to one page, you can just do um, the various things that uh, so I've just outlined there. Again, there'll be a uh, I'll be posting on the blog the seven checks, and the video will be going on there as well. So you can quickly see the seven things, the fundamental basics of SEO. Um, the main thing to check is the page title. Every page, click on a few pages here and there. Make sure that they're not repetitive and they're not similar or, or, or the same. The description tag, um, if you remember, go back to the Google listing, the black text, it's not visible on the page. What you will need to do is right click on the page and click on view page source. So wait for that to load up. What you want to find or search for is DESC. So just type in description and you can see there meta name description. And that's the black text in a Google listing. That's what's being used to populate that black text. And this is what you can play with. We can change on within your CMS, um, see what works, what increases ranking, what increases click-through rates as well. Do this on every page. Make sure it's not the same description text on every single page. Make sure it's unique and specific. All right, go back to the presentation. What question should I ask? Uh, a common question that comes up as well is, okay, I want to do SEO, what kind of questions should I ask developers or agencies or when I'm doing my brief? Uh, be trying to give some details of where you're at at the minute. If you've got an existing site, you'll need to ask, will my CMS allow me to change page title, descriptions and headers without affecting other elements of the page. Because the importance of those three particular areas, um, we've encountered content management systems that don't allow you to change page titles without changing the navigation or what, what's written in the navigation, so they're both are linked together. Not good. Um, so make sure that your CMS allows you to fully um, change page titles, descriptions and headers. Another good question to ask is, what are my top 10 non-branded search terms? And these are search terms that people have used to get to your site without entering your company name or your product brand names. Um, and you want to see how much traffic that's generating. If it's ones, twos, and threes every month, you know this is why you need SEO to get those ones, twos, and threes into twenties, fifties, and hundreds. Um, and if you can, and if your analytics has been set up in the way that allows you to, to measure outcomes, so downloads, inquiries, and sign-ups, and registrations, look at which search terms generate you the most inquiries, and do more of those. And focus your effort on the two and three that bring you the best quality inquiries, rather than focusing on a hundred, and you don't know which one's working and which one's not. Um, 
Another question is where are the opportunities for growth and how will we do it? Um, by doing the seven things that I've just outlined isn't going to necessarily get you growth in the long term, but it may provide you quick fixes to fix a few things short term. Opportunities for growth means moving into different marketplaces, targeting different audiences, um, maybe try and branch out, so looking to diversify a few keywords, and competition. A lot of the times when we ask marketers, who are your competitors, nine times out of ten, those competitors aren't visible online. So you're, you're almost all of your competitors that you come up with on tenders. Um, the competition who provide your products online might be completely different. So the companies that you encounter on a daily basis, you won't even be aware of the ones that are online. Um, and you can do those seven checks that I've just given you on the competitor site to see whether you're play, starting off from a level playing field, whether you're playing catch up, or whether actually you're ahead um, and you need to start picking up the pace so that when they start doing SEO or any sort of online activity, um, they're always playing catch up to you. Measurement, um, again, going back to briefs um, and we've read previously that you know, don't know if it's working or what you've got out of it. Um, measurement of SEO is very, very fundamental. It's very important. So measuring traffic from non-branded search terms. Don't measure the traffic that comes from the top 10 keywords because they'll just be your company name or different spellings of your company name. Look at non-branded, people who haven't looked for you. Um, how much traffic are you generating? The number of search terms in total, so you want to increase, um, say for example you're bringing in 1,000 visits from 100 keywords today, you'll want to increase the number of keywords, so 100 you want to turn into 1,000, you want to turn into 10,000. And out of those 10,000, you'll also want to grow the number of people um, that you've captured who have searched for non-brand related items. And if, again, going back to possibilities, analytics, you also want to measure how many inquiries, how many CPD bookings, how many downloads, how many registrations for CAD drawings, whatever it may be that the purpose of your website is, how many goals have been generated from non-brand search traffic. Search engine rankings, um, one that I don't particularly dwell on too much because rankings fluctuate daily, um, weekly, monthly. The only time to really panic about rankings is when um, your ranks fall by more than 10 places. So if you're number two one month and then you're number 25 the next month, that's when you need to start really looking and investigating. Not when you go from two to four because little things matter like new stories that are populated or new images that have appeared on a search listing page. What does, what does it look like? Traffic from non-brand keywords, if you're looking at your analytics, really this is what you want to be seeing. The orange line is last year, the blue line is this year. You want to see growth um, at the point of which you started, you're doing your uh, search engine optimization and content building. You want to see month on month growth. Um, you also want to see growth in the number of keywords uh, used to get to your website. So last year, 4,930. This year, 13,500. So nearly three times as many keywords, and that's visibility has increased by three times on the web, which resulted in an increase in traffic of 208%. Um, you may also want to just take it down to keyword level. So which keywords weren't bringing in traffic last year that are now bringing in nearly 2,000 times as much traffic um, this month? And again, try and see if you can um, turn that into, well, okay, 123 visits generated 10 inquiries, whereas 123 visits generated nothing. You probably don't want to be focusing on that, or you may want to investigate other areas. And then, most importantly, tying that back to goals. You want to see increases in inquiries, registrations, um, specification type inquiries, CPD requests, quick inquiries. 
you want to see growth in all of these areas and you want to be able to be measuring these goals based on your SEO activities and this is really where your returns come in from um, and being able to fine-tune your efforts to say right okay well these particular search terms aren't working so we should focus on the ones on the few that are So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, just recapping quickly, what does a well-optimized opti website look like? You want to be looking for unique page titles and descriptions and headers. You want to be looking at clean, well-structured URLs. Try and do the non-www dot test and just make sure it redirects. If it doesn't redirect, um, you've got problems. Make sure there's a sitemap by typing in forward slash sitemap.xml or sitemap underscore index.xml if it's WordPress. Make sure there's no error page or 404 page. Robots.txt file, make sure there's a, a robots text file um, by doing forward slash robots.txt and hit enter. Make sure there's a few um, internal links um, going to various different other key pages, related pages. And make sure images, images have descriptive alt tags and they contain keywords. So those are seven things that you can quickly do and check on your own site compared to the site. That's kind of it really from me. Um, if you have got any questions, please feel free to fire in my way. Um, what I would like to do is to populate a blog post with your questions and then answer them um, and make sure that everybody who has similar questions and questions that you're not aware of and, and just share those answers. Um, so there's various different ways you can get through to give me a call or pop me an email, contact me on Twitter. Um, please do have a look at our YouTube page um, and our blog as well, which has got lots of resources and information also. So thank you very much for taking the time for um, joining me on this webinar. Um, by the end of today, I'm hoping to get this video, uh, the presentation, um, and all the notes that go with it up onto our blog. So I'll be sending you a link um, to the video, to the presentation, any notes. Um, I've got a checklist, a downloadable checklist as well, which you can download, um, which you can tick through. So um, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me. I've got a question, uh, just how do I filter the non-brand search terms in order to do a comparison in GA? Um, I have got a walkthrough, so that's a question from Sue Butcher. I have got a walkthrough on our blog, so I'll send you a link and I'll put that onto the blog um, on how to do these specific things um, individually. Um, and if you've got any questions, again, you know, if you're trying to do these things, do pop me a question on Twitter um, on there most of the day anyway. So, again, thanks for taking the time to um, join me in this webinar. Um, see you and hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you very much.